What's up, y'all? Respect the Chat Podcast, episode 29, the Eric Dickerson episode. True legend. Eric Dickerson played for the Rams, the Colts, and the Falcons late in his career. Eric Dickerson, man. Famous, famous, big time number 29. Rich is here. What's going on, everyone? Frankie's here. Hey, what's up? Eric Dickerson, I want to hit y'all with a little stats. I think that's something we'll start. You know, we got to start little traditions on the show. We give a, we'll give a number um, with the episode of the, of the player we really like or is a legend. So Eric Dickerson, 13,000 yards rushing in his career. 13,000? In 3,000 attempts. Um, 2,000 yards receiving. 281 receptions. Pretty crazy, right? Yeah, definitely for the time he played, you know? Right. A running back didn't really catch a lot of passes out of the backfield. Yes. Seven fumbles. Through his whole career. That's Through his it. whole career. That's what this says. Wow. That's what this thing says. Maybe eight, possibly. But let's see. Let's <laughs> Does it say eight, eight, possibly? eight, possibly? No, but it's like weird the way it's the way it's listed. If you guys could see it. See, it's like fumble, and then it says lost, and then it says receiving. And I don't know what that means. Just, if you add, it just says so he has ten. seven fumbles, and only one of them was lost. Like wow. So he got now that's team a stat. Oh, he and then what is the receiving? What does that mean too? Uh, no idea. Yeah. So let's just go. <laughs> Eric Dickerson seven to ten fumbles in his career, but Eric Dickerson the man. Xavier Rhodes, another guy who wears twenty nine. Um, Demarco, Demarco Murray, Murray, a great number twenty nine. Love I him. I rocked the number twenty five. I mean, not 29 one time. Did you? Freshman football. Wow. Just a little shout out to myself. Good for you. Shout Two out. Nine. I got a high it's school ugly football number question now. to ask you, Rich. Okay. I was thinking about it this week. Just real quick. All right. Um, because I've noticed that I still do things in my everyday life based off of what I've learned during football. Does that ever happen to you? Oh, yeah. Of course. That's a sad life. Like, <laughs> How's that a sad life? You learn a lot. I'm playing. just joking. Go ahead. I like, want to hear what it is first. Just like simple stuff, like never being late, like 20 minutes early to everything. But Ooh, my, I don't do that. But my <laughs> and you my, and you should learn that in life also. But okay, go ahead. My manager called me over to him, and he was like, kind of on the other side of the plant, you know. And just without thinking about it, I ran. <laughs> really? Yeah, and I still do that. Like I feel like if someone calls me and I don't run, like you it's disrespectful. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, uh, you ain't, you don't run when I call you. The only thing I <laughs> you either ignore my phone call or you, you start talking to somebody and else. He was like, "Why are you running?" Uh, I didn't have an answer. The only thing I still do out of respect is if I see a coach, I still call him coach. Yeah, that's good. You should do that. I like that. You know, like still to this day, if I see Coach Olsmer. What's going on, Coach? Yeah. yeah. Coach you Wolf. Shout yeah. out to Randy Wolf. Yeah, always. Coach Wolf. Always Definitely. shout out to Coach Wolf, man. He wasn't even my coach, and the guy is the man. He is the man. Yo, uh, NBA season back in full effect. Um, got a pretty good game on tonight, it looks like. I don't know who the Rockets are playing. but Pelicans. First, the Pelicans. Very nice game. I'll check that out a little bit later. My wife is out for the night, so I could check a little basketball out. Um... James Harden came into the arena. I love when they show the guys coming into the arena. He had some type of long dress on, <laughs> Looked or like an Indian, something like, like a like a like a cover up. Yeah, like type it, thing. yes, it was like, like a cover up, like what your chick would wear, like on, on the beach to cover up her. <laughs> he, looked like, he looked like Pocahontas. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. It was wild. We should post that with my <laughs> face on it and see what people think. Um, it, speaking of basketball, LeBron James going to make his debut Thursday. Yep. So excited to see that. Excited to see the 23 and the gold or the yellow or the whatever you want to call that color or the purple, whatever they're going to wear. Um, excited to see LeBron James. I say he's going to be the MVP of the league. I say that the Lakers are going to finish five or better. I know I said six in previous episodes. I'm going to change what I said. I think I'm, I'm going to go with five or better in the playoffs that they finish and I think LeBron James, like I said, MVP. You guys disagreed, right? You chose. Yeah. You I'm chose. Going, I went. I went Kyrie Irving. You went Kyrie and Frank. You went Steph, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, here is a thing that I want to ask you guys: Do you think the Lakers' current team is the team that they have all year, or they, do they make a trade heading into the you know around the trade deadline, around All Star break? You know how that goes. I love that time of the year. There's like names flying out about people want to trade guys who they think they're going to lose or that have been going to become free agents and they're not going to get anything for them. So what do you think? Think the Lakers make a move um, or they kind of roll with the same team they got throughout the year? I think they'll make a move if the money's right. Mm -hmm. 
uh, a player, maybe like Jimmy Butler, a guy that wants out of Minnesota. Yeah. I, he's a free agent next year, correct? Yeah. So maybe like halfway through the year, maybe they could get Jimmy Butler to sign there to finish out the year with them. And then maybe they'll have a shot, you know, like some, something like that I could see happening with the Lakers. But uh, yeah, it all depends on the money. I think they're trying to save as much money as they can for next year when everyone does hit the, the, the market for free yeah. agents. Yeah. Frank, what do you think? Yeah, I think that that's the move. I, I think you save the cap space because there's so many high-level free agents next year, you know? Mm. And you're not going to win the Western Conference Finals this year, you know? I, right. I don't think so. So I think you save your money and you really go after some top-level guys in the offseason. Right. Um, I mean, some top-level. DeMarcus Cousins will be a free agent next year. Uh, Kyrie Irving will be a free agent next year. Al Clay, Horford. Clay Thompson, Kimba Walker. Yep. A uh, bunch of people. Isaiah Jimmy Thomas, the, the point guard. DeAndre Jordan only signed a year contract with Dallas. A um, lot of different guys. And also, Carl Anthony Towns would be a restricted free agent. So, I don't know exactly how that works. I believe that works of, like, his team has the rights to him first to offer the deal, and they could match any deal. They could offer him the most money. They could I offer believe. the most money, and I believe I think they could match it. Like if another team offers him a certain amount, they could say, "No, we we're going to give you this," and he has to sign. There. Yes, if they match the deal with another team offers, then he stays with that team. Right. Okay. Um, and I agree too. I agree that the Lakers make a move. I agree. I, I think they. I think they really. I don't think they have to, but I think by All Star break, LeBron James works his magic, and the Lakers and and Magic Johnson are like, all right. Who do we think we can get? Let's make a move for them because we have a good chance at signing them again next year. I was talking to Mike Mabel over the weekend. He was saying what he thinks they should do is they should just boost Lonzo Ball up, you know? LeBron boosts him up. He's playing really good. Da 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 da. They they get him looking really good and then whoop, ship him out. Ship him out. Yeah. Roll with Rondo. Because Rondo really to me is the man there anyway. Shout out to Mike did Mabel. You hear, yes. Did you hear what Rondo <laughs> yes. said? He wants to be the first player ever to win in Boston and in L.A. All it's right. It's never been done. I like that, man. You think you think it's possible? Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's definitely but possible. But how many years do you think he's going to be there? Well, they, they could win it this year, you know? Uh, I think there's no a possibility way. that they could win it this year. The That's, more and more I look at that team, the more I see gonna that. They're not going to be able to go up and down the court with the with the Rockets or the OK. I, I, don't, I don't even see them being able to go against the, the, the Utah Jazz. That, no, that team gonna, is great. They'll smash the Jazz. No way. Yeah. I think we'll find out really early. The Jazz is going to be a really good team in the I West mean, chemistry year. could be an Golden. issue at first, right? Yeah, that's what I think. I think but, I, I think we'll really see, like, 20 games in what they're really about, you know? And I agree. The chemistry's got to get there. But the young guys, Kuzma, Ingram, uh, having Rondo, another young guy in ball, LeBron, the best player in basketball, if not one of the best players in basketball, and then they got a plethora of other players over there that they could, you know, uh, uh, JaVel McGee, another big man that they can get throwing and throwing in at. I think they could do a lot of damage once they get like on the same page with each other. I think I LeBron's going to have to spread the floor more than he did in Cleveland. I agree. I think that he's going to have to be able to shoot the three. Mm hmm. Um, if that team wants to be successful, which he can do, no problem. But Definitely. more than in Cleveland, he has to take on that role. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, Rich mentioned Jimmy Butler before, another guy who's going to be a free agent who may end up in L.A. Jimmy Butler voices his opinion about not wanting to be in Minnesota. Then it comes out a week ago or so, or earlier in the week, saying um, he shows up to practice and he ju it. jumps on a team with all like the third string guys and smashes all the first and second team guys. And the whole time doing, he says, you need me. You won't win without me yeah, the he's, whole time. Yeah, he's it's, talking to the coaches. He's talking to the GM. He's talking to the other players. He's giving everyone the business. They interview him after, and he just sticks to his guns. Like, yeah, I, maybe I should have handled it better, but from what I'm seeing and what the vibe I'm getting from the front office is like they're not making any changes over here, so we're okay with losing, you know? He acknowledges that Carl Anthony Towns is the most talented player on the team, and Wiggins is probably the most athletic player, or that Towns is the best player on the team, and, and Wiggins is the most athletic or something like that. He was giving those guys shout-outs, but he was saying that nobody plays harder than me, and I want it more than everybody that's out there right now. And, and that's, that's what his teammates were saying, too. They were saying, like, yeah. listen, when he's here, he's here. He's giving 100%. He's a right. baller. Right. He goes hard. So, I mean, they want him there. The players want him there. Mm -hmm. So, 
even Wiggins came out and said, like, if we want to win this year, we need him. We need Butler. Yeah. Oh, we need somebody like that. We yeah, need somebody yeah. that wants it more than everybody. Yep, he'll make his debut tonight, tonight against the Spurs, man. And that's pr- most likely on TV. I wonder when. But um, <laughs> we'll definitely, we're going to get a lot ESPN, more basket. Yeah. That's probably yeah. a late night games countdown. We're going to try to get you guys, as, uh, you know, more basketball um, knowledge, more basketball stats and stuff like that. What's the two games on tonight, Rich? No, these were the two games that opened up the oh, season Oh, they opened up the season. Night. What were they? We had the Warriors. They had their celebration in, uh, what's their arena called? Orca? Yeah. Or- or- Oracle. Oracle. Uh-huh. I forget what it is. Orca is the, 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 the whale. That would be the whale, yeah. <laughs> All good. All right. Anyway, but they had their ce- the celebration last night. They got their, their third ring in yep. four years. Uh, they beat the Thunder 108 to 100. And then the Celtics, they played the Sixers, and the Celtics dominated the Sixers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 105 to 87. 